GMK Tech enters the AMD Ryzen H25 Arena with a Knockbox K12. What's more to be said? AMD's latest mobile CPU naming scheme sucks. For some reason, market leader AMD continues to pretend to be the underdog and parrots Intel's awful CPU naming schemes instead of setting their own. Maybe it's all one big internal company joke we're not privy to for the lols. Like the USB naming scheme. Anyway, GM Ktex K12 is a big boy, much larger than previous GM Ktex minis, and I'm okay with enlargements if I don't have to put up with loud whiny fan noise. The K12 has a completely new design over the previous gen, which takes its cues from the Evo X1. It has a metal wrap around the plastic case, which makes it look like some sort of PC sandwich. Something that I really like is that it has some rubber feet on the side allowing you to prop it up vertically. Others do this with separate stands, but this is a better implementation and an addition I appreciate, since I prefer my minis vertically. There's an RGB fan inside which is barely visible. You can cycle different lighting modes with the fan button. Normally, I'd complain that you can't turn the lighting off, but it's barely visible and doesn't annoy. The K12 comes in at 410 US dollars for the bare bones or 550 dollars for the 32 gigabyte RAM 1 terabyte SSD version. In the box you'll find a compact 19 volt 120 watt power supply, HDMI cable and VESA mount. The front of the mini has a CMOS reset, power button as well as a USB 2 and USB 5 gigabit. The USB type C port is fully featured. It's 10 gigabit, supports power and display and allows a one cable solution with a USB-C monitor. GMK Tech has thrown in a MediaTek RZ616 Wi-Fi 6E for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has a HDMI 2.1 port allowing up to 4K 120Hz, USB 4 40 gigabit which is also fully featured, DisplayPort 1.4 up to 8K 120Hz, Oculink port, USB 2, USB 5 gigabit and dual Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN. Let's bust open the K12 to look at its insides. First we need to remove these screws which double as feet. Slide off the metal sandwich and you can see the unit consists of a fan on each side. Another four screws to remove on the sides and then we can remove the top plastic enclosure. This mini PC is unique in that it has three 2280 M.2 Gen 4 slots. The one occupied by the OS drive is X4 speed while the other two are X2. For this pre-build, GMK Tech has included 32GB of TWSC DDR5-5600 memory and a 1TB Crucial P3 Plus drive. Underneath the SSD, you'll find the M.2 Wi-Fi card. If you happen to get one of the pre-build options, Windows 11 Pro will be pre-installed and it's clean according to Malwarebytes. I tested the latest version of Ubuntu and it works without any issues. All right, let's see how the K12 holds up in the benchmarks. Starting with Cinebench 23 single core. It's down a bit over the B-Link Sur 9 with the same CPU, but it's 1% and doesn't mean much. In multi-core, the K12 does a bit better in each power mode. Again, doesn't mean much with a margin of less than 2%. Geekbench gives a slight win to the K12 in both single and multi-core. Nothing out of the ordinary here. An area the K12 did a bit better is in the H.264 CPU video encoding test. And there's a noticeable difference in the longer AV1 encoding test with performance mode enabled. Nothing to get excited about though, both minis are performing pretty similarly. The K12 also wins in the AV1 hardware video encoding test. Next we're looking at the Geekbench AI CPU test and it's practically the same result between both minis. In AI GPU, the K12 is noticeably behind. This will typically indicate a lower 3D Mark graphics score, like it does in Firestrike, where B-Link Sur 9 is ahead by 4%, almost 3% in Time Spy, and nearly 4% in Steel Nomad. Not a big difference at all, but it is a slight performance decrease, and that's because the Sur 9 has the memory speed advantage. In the previous Ryzen H255 mini PC review, I tested various games at 1440p. This time I'm going to test at 1080p same detail for a side-by-side -side comparison. 
It's all native performance with no upscaling used. Some AAA games have a low FPS even at 1080p. Some testing with FSR balance mode upscaling. Here are some emulators. The USB 4 and Oculink port allow for various expansion possibilities. I tested them using an eGPU with an RTX 4070 Super. Here you can see how much faster Oculink can be against USB 4 using the same eGPU. Those wanting to compile code on their mini PC will be interested in this specific test. GMK Tex K12 currently takes the top spot in the small sample with balance mode. And with performance, it's in second place. The K12 performs very well in Adobe Photoshop, taking first place with performance mode enabled. The Adobe Premiere result is excellent out of the box and only beaten slightly in performance mode. 3D Mark's storage benchmark shows the crucial SSD performing well with one of the highest spots on the list. The SSD temp held up fine under a thrash test with no thermal throttling. Not surprising with a heatsink and fan keeping it cool. Bluetooth range is below average at 3.7 meters or just over 12 feet. Some previous GMK Tech units have struggled with Wi Fi range, but the K12 fixes the issue with no connection problems at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band while playing a full game of Valorant. An idle power draw of 11 watts is a bit above the norm, while maximum power draw is as expected based on the power mode chosen. Increasing the power mode results in higher performance, more power draw and more heat. Still the CPU temp stayed around the mid 90C mark for both modes. However, fan noise does go up in performance mode to handle the extra heat. I'd stick to balanced as I don't think the performance boost is worth the extra fan noise. I know I say that a lot, but it's usually the case. Oh, and you can see the idle fan noise is louder than most minis. Overall, B-Link so 9 is a substantially quieter and smaller mini PC. In the so 9 review, I did mention the trend is to make bigger mini PCs. But wow, this one really ups the volume, hitting 1.5 litres. Not the largest we've looked at for a Mini with integrated graphics, but here it's in the top 3. GMK Tech Minis used to go into the BIOS with the delete key on startup, but now that has been changed to the escape key. On the main screen, you can change the power mode. In advanced are the commonly sought options. One new one is HDMI CEC support. In GFX configuration, you can change the amount of VRAM you want to allocate. And that is the BIOS overview. GMK Tech's K12 is another interesting mini PC which differs a lot from their previous generation. It performs well, has three M.2 storage slots, and Oculink if you need it. I'm happy to see a compact power supply included. Idle fan noise is higher than most, and it's not great under load with performance mode either. I'd stick to balanced. And considering its noise levels, it's much bigger than other mini PCs with the same CPUs. Bluetooth range could be better. The K12 was highly requested, and overall, it's pretty good. The three storage slots and Oculink are its standout features, which separate it from the other H255 minis we've looked at. While it is a big boy, 
It's smaller than GMK Tech's recently released Evo X2, which features AMD's fastest integrated graphics rivaling dedicated mobile GPUs. You can check out just how fast it is right here. Cheers!